Well, hello, my lovelies. It's Janet Perez with the Painted Saguaro coming to you today with Paint Couture Paints to show you how to create another lovely piece using all Paint Couture products. So today I'm gonna to be working on this mahogany piece. You can see that decal, excuse me, that applique on the front, which is the iFlex applique IFW 1400. And I'm sorry, I didn't show you how I added it, but it's the first time I've used one of the iFlex products. Um, I've never used any of the bendable wood products before, and I was a little nervous about it. So I wanted to do it off camera, and I shouldn't have been nervous at all because it was really quite simple to do with my heat gun and some wood glue. But um, I was nervous, so I didn't record it. But um, that is, again, the IFW 1400, and it's a beautiful little applique. So added that, and now I'm using the uh, Premium 2-in-1 Primer by Paint Couture. And I just want to prime this whole piece because... Mahogany wood is notorious for bleed through. Now you can see on the third drawer down, there was an original applique on this piece, uh, like a, an original transfer of the OG transfers. It was like a really weird little funky floral thing over what looked like wood inlay, but it wasn't. And I scraped that off with a razor blade. And because I did that, it exposed the wood beneath um, removed a lot of the varnish off. And so I sprayed that with shellac um, before I'm adding the primer because it will have additional bleed through. I did not sand this piece at all because if you sand mahogany, you're gonna get even more bleed through than you could ever want. And you would have to do four or five coats of primer to stop the bleed through. I don't care what kind of bin shellac primer or two-in-one primer, or anything that you use. The bleed-through is gonna keep coming through until you get it sealed completely. So um, use that shellac for anything where you sand, and then use the two-in-one primer and you're good to go. And you can also see I'm gonna be painting over these drawer pulls, which I'm not a huge fan of doing, but um, I had to do it on these because I could not remove the drawer pulls on a couple of these. The screws were completely stripped. So now what I'm doing is I am pulling out basil, cozy beige, and buttercream chalk style paints all by Paint Couture. And I am going to be using my ch uh, chippy brush and just stippling this paint on. I'm going to show you how to do the absolute easiest blend you could ever possibly try to do. And all it is is just pouncing your brush on and um, you get kind of a nice little textured style uh, paint design. You're not gonna get any kind of streaky brush strokes or anything else with it. And stippling a blend is the easiest blend style you can possibly do. So I'm pulling it, as you can see, I'm kind of pulling it into the, the edges of each drawer seam, um, pulling it across the top a bit and across the bottom a bit down towards the center. And um, this is going to be my entire frame color. Now I'm pulling out that cozy beige, which is a really nice kind of warm beige color. And again, stippling it. I'm not so much worried about the blend at this stage, but I'm using my uh, Mr. Bottle also by Paint Couture, to make sure that my paint doesn't get too dry. Um, you don't want it dripping, but you absolutely don't want to feel your brush drag on your paint. So you wanna make sure that you keep that movement capability going, because as you can see, I'm going back in over that green to start blending that green into that cozy beige. So I'm just, going to continue working those paint colors together, keeping them moist, adding the cozy beige as I work my way down, and the only brush action you're going to see me do is that stippling motion. That's all you really need to do to get a really nice blend going. So I'm curious how many of you have tried blending yet. 
And if you have, what's the most effective blend style you have tried? And you can see I'm not adding a lot of paint. I'm using the paint that's still in my lid. So you, this doesn't require a whole lot of paint to do this technique either. Work in that green. And you can see too that I have a couple of different brushes in my hand and eventually uh, excuse me eventually I'll be having four brushes in my hand because I'll have one brush for the green one brush for the cozy beige and now I'm pulling that buttercream color out so I'll have another brush for the buttercream and then I'll have a clean brush to kind of work all of the blend colors together so you can see that that buttercream color complements the cozy beige. The cozy beige complements the, the uh, basil color, and they all just work really well together. You want to use complementary colors typically when you're doing a, a blend. And I'm just working that all the way through the center. Now I'm only going to show you half of this dresser getting blended because the other half is going to be exactly the same technique and I'll just pull the two sides together towards the center but um, for time constraint purposes I'm only going to show you half of it on this video so I'm just continuously blending only stippling only pouncing Now, I didn't condition my uh, chip brushes appropriately prior to uh, this video, unfortunately. So you'll see me pulling bristles out kind of frequently. Um, to condition your brush, all you really need to do is uh, run them under some water before you start using them and then kind of flick them a few times to pull those loose bristles away and then you don't have this issue. But I wasn't thinking clearly before I started the video. I was just anxious to get this piece started. You can see I used the mister just to make sure that I'm keeping that paint moving because I want this to have a really nice sort of English garden feel to it. And I believe that I'm achieving that feel. I don't know. What do you guys think? So... We're almost done with this part of it. Um, just need to finesse that blend a little bit better. And then we'll be ready to paint the second half of this piece and then move on to the top. So let's just finish this side up and do a close up of the top part. Okay, so we're working on the top part now, and I'm going to be doing a faux wood finish on this because the top was really beat up. So I'm starting off with Modern Rattan, which is part of the mineral paint line from Paint Couture. And um, as you can see, it's a really great sort of tan color. Um, this is a great color if you're doing the Sonoma style paint technique on a piece of furniture. Uh, um, I really like this for any kind of mid-century modern piece that you're doing. Um, but anyway, this is going to be my base coat. Um, the top of this piece was really beat up, abused, had water stains, had deep gouges. I had to do some, um, serious repair work to it before I primered it. So, uh, this is why I'm doing the faux wood finish on it. Making sure that I do the long finish strokes on it because for the faux wood grain that I'm doing, um, I wanna make sure that it is as smooth and streak free as possible at this phase. I love this color. Make sure that I get all of the edges around the lip of it taken care of. And before this is even dry, I'm going to go on to the next step or the next phase of this faux wood finish. 
which is adding espresso, which is a dark, dark brown color, and it is part of the Paint Couture mineral paint line. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use some of the clear glazing base that I've mixed with espresso and a little bit of water to thin it out just a little bit and to extend my dry time. And I'm going to cover the entire lid with this, the entire top, along with the edges, the lip, and the top um, back piece. And making sure that I, you know, go in the same direction and work kind of quickly because even though it's a glaze and you've got a long dry time, um, I don't want it to sit too long. I don't want it to soak into the wood too much. I just want to give it a hint of that darker tone um, to give it a little more of a natural wood look to it. And then I'm wiping it back with a rag and you'll see how it just sort of enhances the tone of that modern rattan and then that darker espresso faux wood grain look that I went for and just makes it even pop that much more. And I really love how this is looking. So I'm just adding a couple of final touches here, finessing it just a tiny bit, and we're pretty much done. I've already added the transfer to the front of this piece. Um, I didn't show you how to do that because I've shown you transfers before and there's really no need to show that again. Um, adding a little bit more modern rattan to this just to kind of highlight some parts that I feel got a little too dark. And there is your faux wood finish. What do you guys think? So now here we have that applique again, and I've sort of done the left side, but now I'm gonna show you the right side. So here we have that uh, clear glaze along with the uh, tint of espresso in it again, and I'm brushing it with an artist brush into the details of this applique because I really wanna pull out those details. And you can see how it enhances those dark crevices of this applique. Once I wipe it back, it really just makes it pop. And it's so important to do this when you've got something that's got that much detail in it to really just give it a wow factor. As you can see, I'm gonna add a little more to the left side too to enhance it a bit. I like it better than wax. You have a lot more control with it. Now I'm using the Pink Parfait Perfect Pigment Powder. You guys, if you haven't tried the Perfect Pigments, oh my gosh, what are you waiting for? This stuff is amazing. It comes in a little tiny container, but it goes so stinking far. Um, I dipped my brush in a little tiny bit of water and then barely put the tip into the pigment powder and look at all this color I'm getting. It is a wow factor of 195 plus. And um, I mean, wow. So that pink is so gorgeous. It ties in beautifully with the transfer that I used below, which by the way is called The Botanist. It's by IOD. Um, and I love the pigment powders. I love them. You can mix them with paint. You can mix them with water. You can mix them with acrylics. You can mix them with the chalk style paints, whatever you want to do. Now I'm using the rose chalk style paint by Paint Couture, and I'm just kind of adding it to the highlights of um, where the light would hit naturally on this applique to kind of draw light into the applique and um, using my finger to kind of blend it in because, hey, we use all of the tools we have available to us, right? <laughs> and it just makes this applique come to life, I believe. And that's it. This piece is done. To wrap this piece up, I sealed it with the dead flat protective top coat. It is completed, it's done. I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think of this piece. Give us a share, a follow, a like, 
and subscribe to the Paint Couture page if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time right here.